windows. Um, so it's actually the whole plan world is more or less reflected here uh, in, a, in one room. And it will be great working with you today, tomorrow, and the day after on our new CSP, which is a, a big, big challenge. Um, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to have really fruitful discussions. Actually, my basic expectation of this workshop is not so much in terms of answers. In, in three days' time, we will not find answers to all our questions, but I hope at least it will help us in drafting exactly the type of questions that we feel that's very sharp, put well, what we need to know, what we need to do, um, and what we need to be prepared for in the next five years. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm uh, proud and honored to have here our CEO and our regional director. Uh, that's an opinion we will not, not often have. Um, and um, uh, I was, what I wanted to share is I was challenged a bit by AB. We are supposed to, to call it AB, so I'll continue like that. Uh, last night when she asked me what exactly is um, your, the objectives you have in mind for the next five years. And of course the easy answer would be, well, come, and come to our workshop and that's all we are discussing these days. Um, but I reflected a bit on it and actually I want to share, in, I guess I can do it in two minutes, um, my dream for Plan International Cambodia for the next five years. Uh, and of course there is much more to be said to it. It's very simplifying things on a very general level, and it will be need to be loaded by content, and that's what we are discussing these days. Um, and I'm very much open to amendments, because it's all, as we said several times during this two-day trip, it's all about change. We are changing continuously, and we need to be aware that we have to keep changing. Um, I'm sure if we do not change, there will be no success, and if we will change, we will be able to, to get success. Just put on my glasses because we're efficient with glasses. I'll only do it in, in bullet points, um, so I would say, in, in keywords, uh, because there's no time now to share the whole dream. Um, and uh, there will be some overlap with the things Mark just said, uh, obviously, because we've been talking the last few days, but also because I think there are some things that we have in common and it's good to, to repeat. Ten points then. Number one focus and a concentration on impact of what we're doing. And of course, content will come during these days and later. Number two, quality, and also how to show our quality, which takes M&E not only as a function, not only as a report, but as a system. Solid databases. Number three, a strong network. I remember when, when Andy came back from Nepal, and I asked him, how are we doing compared to our peers? How do other organizations do? And actually one basic, and again, sorry for oversimplifying things, but one basic message was, we are relatively strong because we have the network in place. We know the suppliers, we are there, we have been there on the ground for many years, and that makes a difference in the quality of what we can deliver. And I think that's a very nice metaphor for the strong networks we need on our everyday operations, not only in terms of suppliers, of course, but also in terms of how to work with the government, how to work with our partners. That was number three. Number four, an open orientation, which takes an open mind. Um, plant culture is not always inviting in terms of to look outside what's happening in the world around us. We tend to be a bit inward looking uh, because we have so many systems and policies in place, which in a way is good and it helps us. But sometimes it prevents us from looking around what's happening in the world, what's happening in Asia, what's happening in ASEAN, what's happening in Cambodia. Um, before we come to uh, uh, plan Cambodia as such. Um, let's keep our mind and our eyes wide open. Number five, um, the ability to integrate new themes. Of course, it has to do with an open mind as well. Uh, I think we've been able to start working on migration, to start working on child marriage. We may also start thinking about urban development much more than we have done in the past. Plan tends to be much more focused on uh, rural society, which of course is crucial to an essential part of our track record. Uh, but of course cities keep growing, and also in Cambodia, urbanization will keep growing. So that's one of the themes we really have to, to think of, what our role could be. Number six, um, we should be prepared for more than one scenario. 
when we look around us, what's happening in the world around us, what's happening in Cambodia, what will happen in Cambodia when there are elections in 2017 on the local level, 2018 on the national level. Um, let's hope for the best um, and let's have a scenario. If for the best we can just roll out, continue, expand more than what we have done. But if it's different, we should be prepared. We should be thinking of how to prepare for that. Number seven. Plan International Cambodia by 2020 is acknowledged by the children of Cambodia, the girls and boys in Cambodia, the youth of our primary uh, uh, stakeholder, and of course also by other stakeholders. It's a very delicate balance uh, we have to, to keep in, in working with the government, in working with our partners, and first of all in working with our beneficiaries, um, of course also with our donors uh, and with our peers. There's many, many stakeholders we have to take into account, uh, girls and boys in the first place. And hopefully some of these now sponsored children will someday stand up and say, we're now a celebrity and we re remember what Plan did to us or how it helped us in our development. They could be perfect ambassadors for Plan and basically ambassadors for child rights. Number eight. I think we should consider how to be lean and mean. Uh, we have done so in a way. Actually, Plan has grown from 7 to 21 million without a real growth in staff. That's kind of a burden to our staff, I realize. But we have to be smart and think of how can we be lean and mean in the future. Uh, and what does that mean in terms of working with partners? What exactly do we expect from our strategic partners? Then, our staff, number nine, our staff needs to be strong. We need strong experts in who know how to do things and also who have the knowledge. Um, and of course we have to think more about what type of knowledge, what type of competencies. We could have all kinds of discussion about that these days, but for sure we need to be, well, that's a, again a quality ambition. We need to be the best, one of the best, maybe the lead expert in our field. And our staff should also be diverse more diverse probably than it is now. Ten, last one, um, a long-term orientation. Uh, we need to think of sustainability. Um, how are we going to work with government? What is our role? Do we have any exit strategy? Are we here forever? Are we here to stay for another one, two, three generations? What exactly is our horizon? And when we change or when we move, what exactly is our level of ambition by then? Well, I hope these are elements of our, at least it's elements of our, my dream, I can say. I hope it will be a collective dream and we can share about this dream and discuss about it, whether this is really the 10 uh, issues we have to work on. There may be even more. Um, but I'm sure we can collectively work in the common, on our common dream to the benefit of all children, all girls and boys in Cambodia. That's basically the message I wanted to deliver. There's still some things I, I, I want to say. I think it's only basically one thing, um, and that's about um, a token of our appreciation for our CEO being here. Uh, I have a small gift from all of us to you. Uh, I hope you will